Stanley never thought that life could be so cruel. Six months ago, he was happy and full of energy, but now he couldn't even take a step on his own. What did I do to deserve all this? This isn't the life I dreamed of, Stanley whispered sadly. Over the past few months, the man grew so sick of his wheelchair that he would give anything only to get his health back. Don't worry, son, things will certainly work out eventually, his mother told him. Samantha Johnson took her son's tragedy as hard as if it was her own, and not a day passed without tears in her eyes. Of course, she tried not to show her grief as she knew that she needed to be strong for her son to provide support. Stanley understood how hard it was for his mother and always tried not to show how terrible he was feeling. Spending hours looking out the window, the man watched his life go on as if nothing was wrong. People were rushing about, running their errands, never stopping to think that there was someone whose life was much harder than theirs. At moments like these, Stanley usually thought back to his past, to the time when everything was different and a wheelchair wasn't yet a part of his life. Stanley Johnson always did great at school, which was why he easily got into college. The man dreamed of going into the restaurant business ever since he was little. He loved cooking and was really good at it. Stanley saw himself as a famous restaurateur, whose establishment would be considered one of the best in the city. I'm sure you'll achieve everything you want. You're very talented, his girlfriend Megan used to say. The couple met while back at college and had been inseparable ever since then. Unfortunately, everything changed in an instant. One day, Stanley was in a hurry and made a bad decision to cross the road in the wrong place. The traffic at that section of the road wasn't heavy, which gave the young man the illusion of safety. Everything happened so quickly that Stanley only had time to hear the squealing sound of the brakes and the feeling of a strong hit to the side. To the credit of the driver who hit him, he did everything he could to avoid the accident. Trying to drive around the man, he abruptly turned the steering wheel, causing the car to skid. Nevertheless, the hit still turned out to be strong enough to cause Stanley a spinal injury and a femoral neck fracture. The man could barely remember what happened next, as he only regained consciousness three days after the accident. Looking at the white hospital walls with surprise, the man asked, Where am I? What happened to me? Deliberately trying to avoid looking her son in the eye, Samantha took his hand and said, You were hit by a car, dear. The driver was detained, but the accident wasn't his fault. You were jaywalking in their security camera footage to prove it. But the driver must have gone over the speed limit, right? The road was empty, I checked. Stanley exclaimed with despair in his voice. Samantha sighed. No, son, he was driving within the speed limit. Nevertheless, the driver wanted to pay your medical bills, but I refused. I'm sure we can handle it. Stanley raised an eyebrow in surprise. But that's not right, Mom. If he's guilty, he should pay. We could definitely use the money. Samantha was feeling very uncomfortable because she realized that she had said too much. All this time, she deliberately tried to hide the fact that money was simply powerless in Stanley's case. Her son was headed for a life in a wheelchair, which would be his only means of transportation for years to come. Therefore, the money couldn't help Stanley, so his mother had no reason to take it. On about the seventh day of his stay in the hospital room, Stanley started worrying that Megan never came to visit him. He couldn't reach her on her phone, neither. All he got was the indifferent voice of the mobile operator, announcing that the subscriber was out of reach. Mom, why didn't Megan come to visit me? Did, did anything happen? I, I can't get through to her, Stanley asked anxiously. Mrs. Johnson had to lie to her son yet so as to not hurt him even more. She must be very busy, or... Maybe something happened with her parents. Stanley shook his head in disappointment and turned back to the wall. Frankly speaking, the man didn't believe that his mother was telling him the truth. What could be so important that she didn't even visit her own fiance in the hospital? Trying to avoid this topic of conversation, Samantha attempted to distract her son from his sad thoughts. The bitter truth could upset Stanley and cause him to give up altogether. Therefore, the loving mother didn't want to talk about the fact that Megan had already abandoned him. I'm not ready to live with the disabled person until the end of my days. Why would I resign myself to such a life when I'm still young and beautiful? No, this isn't the life for me. Don't even try to change my mind, the woman said in the first hours after the accident. Deep down, Samantha didn't judge Megan, who honestly voiced her opinion. 
She wasn't ready to take on such a big responsibility as caring for her disabled fiancé. Of course, if Samantha had been in her place, she would have never left her fiancé, who was in such an unfortunate position. Stanley's father died of cancer seven years ago. It was an extremely painful blow for Mrs. Johnson. The poor woman couldn't come to terms with the truth and believed that her husband would be able to overcome the insidious disease until his very last days. Samantha was willing to give up everything just to alleviate her husband's suffering. Unfortunately, there was nothing she could do. Neither the doctor's best efforts nor expensive courses of treatment were of any help. And now, Samantha found herself back at the hospital, watching another one of her family members fighting for his life. Of course, there was no actual threat to Stanley's life anymore, but his moral and physical health wasn't great. Soon, Stanley realized that Megan had left him, and she did it as a coward without even saying goodbye. Meanwhile, all he could do was look out the window and watch his life pass him by. The disabled man had to go through a lot before he realized that it was only through trial and error that he could achieve something in life. The young man suddenly realized that he didn't need the ability to walk in order to work at a restaurant. After all, Stanley's main strength was his mental abilities and knowledge, which were actually very expensive when it came to the restaurant business. For example, he could name the ingredients of any classic dishes of culinary art from memory and without hesitation. Under certain conditions, such knowledge could serve the man an excellent service and be very useful in his line of work. You have a real talent, son. You need to work on developing it, and one day, you will certainly succeed," Samantha said admiringly. Stanley looked hopefully at his mother and realized that she was right. Now, all he needed to do was start working on achieving his goals. Stanley needed to find a job where he could apply himself and make use of his outstanding abilities. But when the man started job hunting, he found himself facing a serious problem. Basically, it all came down to one thing. No one wanted to see a man in a wheelchair working for them. How do you see it? What will the customers think of us? What kind of job do you expect to get? A waiter catering pastries? That's impossible. Stanley heard the potential employer say time and time again. But the man wasn't going to give up. He was determined to get what he wanted. Stanley was ready to do any job, just as long as it was within the walls of a restaurant. As the young man kept getting one rejection after another, he was getting more and more upset. At one point, Stanley became so desperate that he decided not to mention his physical disability to the employer. So what, I'll introduce myself on the phone as an assistant cook. I'll come in for the interview and then I'll see what happens. It's still better than getting rejected right away, Stanley thought, hopefully. Having chosen one of the best restaurants in the city as an experiment, the young man called its manager. Having heard that Stanley had an education in culinary art, the manager immediately invited him in for an interview. I think we have a job for you. It could be an assistant cook or maybe just a waiter. Stanley couldn't be happier. He was so excited about this upcoming interview that he couldn't contain his emotions. However, being in a state of euphoria caused by the first success, the man forgot all about the fact that he deliberately didn't mention his disability when he spoke to the restaurant manager. Stanley came to the meeting feeling elated. The man was certain that it would go well. But when Stanley appeared in the lobby of the restaurant and wheeled past the astonished doorman in the dining hall, he was in for an unpleasant surprise. Seeing the man in a wheelchair, the manager made a contemptuous face and went toward him. Having come closer, the man smiled and asked, Good afternoon. Uh, how can I help you, sir? Stanley felt a bit lost for a moment, and then he told the manager the purpose of his visit. To say that he was surprised would be a huge understatement. What? Are you seriously hoping to get a job at this restaurant? Are you out of your mind? Look at yourself. How, how do you expect to work here? The manager said without even trying to hide his contempt. Looking at the disabled young man, Howard Douglas couldn't believe his eyes. For the first time in his life, he saw such a weirdo who decided that he could work in a wheelchair. But I could work as a consultant, for example. I don't have to do physical work. Stanley pleaded. Didn't you hear me? I don't need any disabled people working in my restaurant. Its reputation is impeccable. It's a five-star place. Howard exclaimed, getting even more irritated. 
Now, the manager already realized that he wouldn't calm down until he got that arrogant wheelchair-bound man out of his restaurant. Seeking to seize the last opportunity, Stanley asked the manager to test his knowledge with a series of questions about cooking. I don't care about your knowledge. You'll scare away the customers with your appearance alone, Howard yelled. At the sound of the manager's voice, the waitresses fled to the back room to hide out there. Everyone knew about Howard's hot temper. In a fit of rage, he could easily fire anyone for even the most insignificant reason. In the heat of ensuing argument, Howard didn't even notice when the owner of the restaurant came out of the office to find out what all the commotion was about. Alfred Stone was a handsome and intelligent man in his 40s, whose eyes shone with kindness. The businessman didn't really like Howard, who was already working at the restaurant when Alfred bought it a month ago. What's going on here? Why are you screaming at this young man? Alfred asked. Howard immediately changed his face and tried to reduce everything to a ridiculous joke. But the tears froze in Stanley's eyes testified that something very different was going on. Sir, I wanted to get a job in your restaurant. Trust me, my knowledge in the culinary arts is very extensive, the young man said, hopefully. Alfred looked at Howard and then said, You have no right to refuse to hire this young man. Of course, he won't be able to work as a waiter, but he could easily work as an assistant cook. Howard nodded his head, agreeing with every word of the owner of the restaurant. At this point, he was ready to fulfill any wish of Alfred Stone just to keep his position as manager. However, Howard wasn't the one who had Alfred's attention at that moment. It was the young disabled man who was sharing the story of how he got his spinal injury. Alfred's face changed beyond recognition, and tears filled his eyes. As it turned out later, it was Alfred who was driving the car that hit the man a little over six months ago. Having learned the truth, Stanley didn't make a scene, but calmly accepted his fate. After all, it really wasn't Alfred's fault, and the businessman was already feeling very bad about it. Thus, with just one decision, Mr. Stone gave Stanley the job of restaurant manager, demoting Howard to the position of a doorman at the same time. Howard's new job would give the former manager an excellent opportunity to reflect on his behavior and rethink his attitude towards people with any social and physical status.